to this is Polemicus. I do apologize, my voice is kind of rough. Uh, I'm just getting over a rather nasty cold. Uh, very nasty, in fact. And that thing's welders are on. You do not want that thing's welders on. I would like to turn that thing's welders off, please. So do not end up accidentally burning off my face. <clears throat> oh, this may have been a mistake. I don't know if I got enough of a voice for this. But I wanted to record this before I, uh, before it's gone forever, so you can actually see something that I'm trying to illustrate here. But as you can see, I've the, the refit is progressing, and I've completed one of the one of the wings on the Ena. And I just wanted to do a bit of an aerial view here, giving you an idea of how much this has changed, how much this has bulked out. This wasn't a, the original intention. Actually, if you remember the original design, those the, the whole wing things on there were kind of a hacked-on refit uh, to begin with because uh, I wanted to have some place I could stuff all these cool little ships that I was finding that I have just recently blown to smithereens. <laughs> but I wanted to have like little wing hangers. I couldn't figure out how to make them how to make them uh, work. Um, then um, no, put that away. Uh, then, no, put that away. I keep putting my hands in the wrong place. Um, and then the, uh, someone came out with the uh, modular doors mod, which allowed me to make hangar doors that didn't require pistons that were whatever size I required, um, which solved a lot of my problems. But when the doors open, the doors have to go somewhere. And so the wings kind of needed thickening to accommodate the doors so I didn't poke out through the top and one thing led to another and I was never really happy with the aesthetics so I decided to change those up and yeah they kind of bulked up tremendously and my frame rate is gone to shit and I don't know why uh, got all the uh, spotlights turned off but I don't know there's something about in there my render does not like okay and the doors are derpy right now. This doesn't happen. This only just recently happened here. So I'm going to open up the doors and so I can show it to you properly. Okay, we're clicking. Okay. Don't want that either. So this is basically the hangar now, and I've got the, the lights across the top there. I'll turn those on so you can get an idea of what it looks like. Even though it's going to completely destroy my frame rate. But we'll go in here and use Mr. Happy Friendly right here to. the spotlights back on. No, no. I would like to select all the spotlights. All the spotlights. There we go. Okay. And you can see this is the hangar here. And they've got doors on the back and the front. Oh, uh, yeah. It's starting to kill my frame rate. Oh, wow. That's bad. But you see, I got doors on the back and the front. And I'm going to turn those spotlights off again. That's an old problem that we, I guess maybe just because I've been turning on all the spotlights because I haven't actually bothered to separate them out or anything. Crosshairs back on. I had those off for filming something. I forgot to turn them back on because I've been playing on my other computer. But yeah, you can see. Still not good for some reason. I guess this computer really needs a reboot. But as you can see, you know, I've 
I've got a fairly spacious hangar here. Uh, this spot here has been the reason why that's raised is so that's compatible with the uh, my Avro Arrow, and so I may end up changing that if I because of the, the current Avro Arrow is kind of lightly armed because it's for the dogfighting lead, so it's only got like three guns on it. It's got two guns and a missile launcher on it. And realistically, if I'm going to take this thing up against NPC ships, I would want to beef up that a little bit. But as you can see, I had to thicken all the uh, all this here so that it uh, hides, so it doesn't pop out of the top. It does occasionally still kind of glitch and pop out of the top, uh, but that's just a visual glitch because the, the doors are not being handled properly, and it's something that only seems to crop up uh, in, um, in multiplayer. It doesn't have, I haven't had any of those problems in single player. As you can see, nice clean door. And I've been carefully, you know, destroying this side of it here because it requires such a massive restructuring. But that is basically the profile of the original wing. And that should give you an idea of how much that's changed. And the next the other thing I'm going to be doing is this poor beast here, the, uh, the Arrow Mark II that uh, Keen made. This is a really, really nifty little little ship. Unfortunately, it was I, I printed it off basically was a test of my uh, 3D printer. It's pretty much the largest ship that my, my printer can print off. Um, which in itself is cool because it, it made was easily replaceable, but now that I'm in a situation where I would want to replace it, I'm not sure if I'm going to, at least I'm not sure I'm going to replace it with another ship of the same design, because this was not terribly useful to me, it's like I, I took it out a couple times and then I just never flew it again. If I'm going to fly, if I'm going to do an attack run on something, this didn't really have what I needed for an attack run, if I was going to go and salvage something right back, it didn't have what I needed. It's this is a tremendous ship if you want to look for a starter ship. This is this this is a, this is a great design. I mean, it's it's basically got everything a starter ship has got, but it's you know got a lot more oomph and uh, it's got batteries and it has firepower. Um, so you know if you know I like it, but it doesn't do anything for me. Um, so I've been designing and I've been working on a new design, which is considerably larger, but it's basically going to be a big tug. And the idea is it's going to have uh, a railgun on the front of it, uh, and so I can basically f find a ship out there, snipe off the uh, the turrets from a dis from a safe distance, and then it'll have enough engines and enough landing gear on it. Uh, it has like 12 landing gear that I can latch onto. Uh, one of those ships, make it safe, latch onto it, and then just use its inertial damages to stop the thing. Basically, as a tug, as a capture ship, um, and it would be large enough that, if necessary, I could, you know, grab a exploration ship and drag it back or whatever I needed to do. Um, and so that's the basically the next design idea that I've that I've got. Now it's considerably larger. I have stolen. Uh, the, the kind of the, the only part of this thing, the only part of this thing that didn't survive, which was the front end of it, I did kind of steal that because I like the shape of it and everything, uh, and I stole some ideas from the, actually the, the arrow design is because the arrow design has is it handles having that much thrust and a huge amount of thrust and a huge amount of gyros and everything, and it does it well, and I like how that handles. And you're not going to get that on a big ship, but something maybe a little bit more a little similar. To that, and so that's basically what I'm going to use to uh, replace this. So I'll be eventually coming back and grinding this all off after I've completed the wing, and then I'll decide if I'm going to continue on at that point or if I'm going to uh, uh, just continue on at that point and um, or build the the Pathfinder. Now, the other option is is that I might find something out there that I would want instead that I would want to basically dock up there. Um, but I would kind of rather have something I built myself, rather than just stealing something from the, uh, 
from the workshop. You know what I mean? The stuff from the workshop is so cool. Well, it's not from the workshop, from the... Well, it is from the workshop, but the, the stuff that from the exploration world, I mean, it's all so cool. But I'd kind of like to have my own stuff. Um, at least, or at least, you know, if I'm going to use it something, I can just use it as a starting point and then make it my own from there. Like I did with the Ena, which is the central part is a... Um, is a, was a Spartan battlecruiser, um, but she's been, but I've heavily modified her for my own uses, and um, I, it, she's she's quite a bit different than than the uh, than the original starting vessel, um, and I kind of made her my own, and I would rather make fly around in a ship that's my own, especially if I'm going to be filming it, than in someone else's ship and just say. Hey, I found this, and so I'm cool because I got a big ship now. I want to, I want to see how my own ship does, uh, and which is why I'm also going to make another attempt at building a, uh, and printing off uh, another arrow. I'm probably going to modify it for my own uses, and I'm probably going to start using that as my primary fighter uh, for you know, capturing stuff. So, I just wanted to give a bit of an update on that on how the refits are going. I expect uh, to probably have all of this done by the end of the week. And then I will be able to get back out there and exploring. And I'm really eager to do that because I do know there was a lot of new stuff added that I hadn't even had a chance to look at yet. Uh, I was getting ready to leave to, to check all that stuff out in Kaboom. So we will see what kind of cool stuff we find out there. And uh, uh, I will uh, talk to you guys all later. Take care. Hello, YouTube. This is Polenicus here at Black Rock Station. I'm just here to uh, do a little bit of weapons testing. Uh, one of the things we're going to need to do for the Ina is to uh, test out her... Uh, basically to inc increase her combat ability. Now... Um, I've been looking around for a new main turret. I've actually already made my decision, honestly, here. But I thought it'd be kind of fun to go around and just test these out. Now, what I've got here in the setup is I have three of the modded turrets that are actually available on our server. Um, we have the Minotaur turret by Darth Biomech, the large railgun turret. Uh, I forget about who the, who, who the maker of these other two are. And the auto cannon turret. Now, as for reference, I've also got the uh, missile launcher and the Gatling gun turrets. Um, but these three were basically the ones I was considering as heavy weapons for the uh, uh, for the Ina. And over here, I have my target block, and it's four layers of heavy armor with a decoy behind it. Uh, the reason for the decoy is basically I. I want the turrets to basically target it. Um, I don't think they'll target one of my own, so that's just sort of a generic decoy. And so the so the idea is now this thing was out of the running right away because it's got no AI. Um, it does move around, but it won't shoot anything. Um, that's not a problem because this is really a turret that you want to have that's player controlled. Uh, because uh, railgun turrets, and I am going to ma man it, and I'm going to show you the kind of damage it does. Railgun turrets punch through so much. They don't do a lot of splash damage, um, but they punch through so much. This is why the Ina has a couple on the front, and the new ship I'm going to build is going to have one. It's basically kind of a sniper gun. Um, but they're cooler than, than the sniper mod, because they're, they're railguns. Um, but what I'm looking for is a AI turret, a, a, a gun that will basically... What the heck is with my frame rate? That was really weird. I don't know what happened there. Uh, but a gun that will basically um, open fire on enemy ships. And the reason for that is is because I've had a couple of scary close calls while I was doing the refit with uh, Shrikes, which are the largest ship that's currently in, uh, I think, endless cargo ships. And they are freaking scary because they're huge and they're heavily armed and they got ammo and they will basically ruin your day. Um, now, they're not the whole reason behind it is I know that Keen is going to be adding AIs and they're probably going to be adding 
um, enemy NPC ships, if some not, someone's going to mod it, and if someone mods it, we're probably going to add it, and basically we're going to be using, yeah, we're going to want to uh, to get in on that, and so I have to make sure that my ship can actually um, survive. Uh, I just realized that I accidentally deleted the Black Rock itself when I when I created this world. Um, but I want to make sure my ship can actually survive and fight this stuff off. And if you know I ever end up in a PvP situation, I want to make sure I can I can account for myself. Even though it's incredibly unlikely, I like to I like to build stuff for these contingencies because it's challenging. So what I'm going to do is we're going to turn on our first turret. Uh, we're going to start off with the Gatling turret. Just see how long it takes for it to. to we're not going to really seriously test it. But we're going to see how long it takes for it to eat through four layers of heavy armor to get to that decoy. So I'll go in here, and I name them all Test. So I'm going to test, Gatling turret, immediately starts firing. And you can see, heavy armor doesn't do a lot. You're basically peeing on it. See, it's slowly deforming, slowly deforming, slowly deforming it. You're going to run out of bolts before you get through that. Okay. Shut up. Don't bother me. Be quiet. Let's try the missile turret then. Okay. And it had some help on the first layer there, of course. And it's way more effective. But it's still kind of slow. You know, we are in the days of volumetric explosions. It's not like the thing where the, the explosion just clips through and destroys everything behind the armor, leaving you with a almost perfectly intact shell. It's very interesting seeing the debris animation that they've got here for all this stuff. You can see it's taken a while to get through this. Let's punch through the black layer. The white layer now. I mean, this is, you know, if you're dealing with like fighters or something or smaller ships, this is great because, you know, it's it's got a large amount of splash damage and you know, these are still useful. I mean, the rate of fire of the Gatling gun and the, the splash damage of the of the uh, the missile turrets do mean that they are still useful and will always be useful unless you're you're putting in completely broken, uh, um, completely broken, uh, unbalanced turrets. And I don't want to do that. Um, and yep, it finally did punch through. I managed to do enough damage to get rid of the uh, decoy, so we're going to turn that turret off then. Now, that took a while. That took a while. Now, you're not going to find many ships with four layers of... Uh, uh, let me just put a block in my, in my hand here so I can... Oh, that's right. down my uh, target. Spectator. 
Okay, so the next one we're going to try is the auto cannon turret. And I love the sound of this thing. Muzzle flash is a little bit off. I can forgive that though. Now this is this is something like this is this is great. Like a flat it's a flat cannon turret basically. Um And holy crap. It punched all the way through all that armor and killed it. In the, in the less time than it took for me to actually describe what the heck it was. Now that does take up a lot of space, but uh, that is incredibly effective. So, I mean, I put one of these on the ship. I had to. I had to put one of those on the ship. Sure, it's disconnected. Pretty. So the next one is going to be the Minotaur turret. Actually, I'm going to turn on the railgun turret just to see if, it, if they did fix the AI on it or not. I don't think they did, but... That was one shot. Mr. Z, oh great, I forgot to make this uh, private game. Okay, uh, you guys will forgive me, I hope. Bye, Mr. Z. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to leave this one as public. That's the problem when you copy the server files, it leaves it as public. So you have to kick people. Learn from my mistakes, YouTube, when you do this sort of stuff. Learn from my mistakes. Okay, and that's basically done. So that's three shots. And the fourth one... And it's done. Okay, so it just doesn't idle around, but it still does fire. Now, as you can imagine, that will one-shot pretty much any turret in the game, even modded ones. Um, this thing is nasty. Uh, it's a... It's, it, it's like, I love it. I love it. It just it just cuts through armor like it's not even there. It took it like three shots to get through that much armor. Four layers. So, I mean, this is the kind of thing you use to basically kill someone in their own battle breach. But I did not put that on the Ina. One, because it takes a lot of space. And two, because I had other options that I liked. Uh, and now we're going to go to the last one. Now, this one does have a known glitch with it. Um, where the... Uh, actually, let me turn that thing off. Last one does have a known glitch with the sound. Where the sound uh, plays, for some reason, in the center of the universe rather than where you happen to currently be at. Uh, but that's fine. It's fine, because you know what? There's no sound in space anyway, so all this stuff is really unrealistic. And unrealistic! Actually, I... I it's Darth Biomech. He will fix it. Because it's Darth Biomech. He makes good stuff. Um, that's one of the reasons why it's on the server there, because the other stuff I have to beg for, but... Um, basically, if... There's something made by Darth Biomech... Basically, just go to uh, go. Hey, I found this thing. It's by Darth Biomech, and it's like, why is it not already on the server? And it gets put on the server because we have lots of Darth Biomech stuff. Okay, so this is the Minotaur turret, and we have 
this thing a try. Now this thing has the advantage of is like the one problem with the railgun is it's a very small area of damage because it's a, it's a sniper round. It's a it's a penetration round. Um, it's not meant to do a lot of splash damage, um, which means that you know you're, you're if you're hitting like a cluster of stuff, you're only going to take out one thing. Um, you can use that easily strategically, but it's not so great for an AI-driven turret. AI turret, you basically want to fire for effect. Okay, are you going to shoot? Did I miss something? You're broken now. You were working before. It's owned by me. That's really odd. Did I get the non-AI one? I'll just turn it on to shoot it. Okay, so you can see there's no sound. And you can see the accuracy leaves a little bit to be desired, but it does a lot of surrounding damage. And it has a decent rate of fire. So if you basically just want to wreck their day, you can imagine how much, how much this, you know, multiples of this would ruin their day. And you can hear my AIM going off as I'm getting pestered. Should turn that sound off on that. Actually, I'm going to do that. There you go. And you can already see it's starting to punch through to the... And there it goes. I was going to keep on shooting because I got it on. Shoot. But that gives you an idea of what I'm basically working with as far as weaponry on the Ena. But yeah, so I don't have the sniper turret on the Hina. I do have sniper, um, the regular sniper uh, uh, guns, though, which are fire exactly the same. They are just not turreted. Um, I love this this design, though. Whoever did the did the model for this, I love it. Darth, Bi uh, so what I've installed on the Hina so far uh, are some Minotaur turrets and an auto cannon turret. The idea of having the auto cannon turret on there is it's it's basically the big gun. Uh, it's a big flat cannon. It's the thing that basically big, bright, showy, scares the crap out of uh, out of whoever. Um, and then you get the minotaurs, which are basically there for they're the, basically the broadsides. And of course, you get the normal complement of uh, missile turrets and gatling gun turrets, just to make things interesting. Um, and so that's basically the weapons upgrade that I've got planned. Um, I will show all this off once it is all installed and everything is done. Uh, they've just released the oxygen update. Um, so I'm working on refitting the Ena for that. That shouldn't be too hard, though, thankfully, because I already had it mostly done because of the uh, um, because of the advanced life support mod that I had in there. So it's basically just a matter of replacing some of the blocks and figuring where all the vents are and where all the leaks are and stuff. Um, but at any rate, I will be giving you guys a grand tour of the ship very shortly and talking about what I plan to do as we get ready to continue our journey into the great inky blackness. 
So, thank you very much for watching, and uh, if this is the end of the video, then this is the end of the video, and uh, I will see you all later. Hello YouTube, this is Planicus here. As you can hear, my voice is quite a bit better now. And I'm just here because I'm about to test something that may go hilariously wrong. Uh, as you can see, the Ina is, at least as far as uh, the externals, is complete. Um, I still have not replaced my auxiliary ships. I got a little bit of touch-up to do there because I guess um, Leith went through and healed damage block on the server, which also completed a lot of those incomplete ones. Though I may leave it like that, just because, you know, I'll probably change out the, uh, the glass here so that it's all the same, because it just should, because otherwise if it's not consistent, it looks weird. But, um, or maybe I'll just leave it. But anyway, um, yeah, I've, uh, I've completed the ship, and now I need to test out uh, my battle separation uh, configuration. Um, while I was building it, I, you can see the ship, well, I'll give you a tour of the ship, assuming that all goes well afterwards, but uh, the ship now incorporates a large number of timer blocks, which I kind of st stuck in there because there were little spots that seemed to work out well for them. And those timer blocks uh, drive a separation sequence that will actually rapidly disconnect uh, both the grind plate and the printer section from the Ina, and basically allow me to go into combat. And given I've just recently got buzzed by another Shrike, um, this might actually be an important thing. Now, unfortunately, I haven't actually gotten enough ammo for all the new guns on there. Um, as you can see, I've got both an autocan turret, and I've installed some of the Darth Biomax Minotaur turrets, which are wonderful, wonderful anti-cap ship weapons. But I need ammo for them, so I'm not, I'm not ready yet, but I, this is part of the stage of getting ready for this. So, I've tested it out in creative. It's worked fine in creative, and I've double-checked to make sure that everything matches up here, so all I can really do now is test it live. Um, now, of course, the problem with multiplayer, uh, multiplayer servers, dedicated services, is if these groups are not right, then it doesn't uh, change them. Uh, so I'm just going to fix all this. All this won't save. Now, if I've missed something, this is probably going to end badly. Now, that's the master uh, block that basically triggers the whole thing. And basically, if this works properly, both the antennas for the printer section and the, the, the grind plate section should turn on. They'll ramp up their thrust and then they'll disconnect and then move out of the way and they'll both move about two to three kilometers away from the Ena. So, here we go. Battle separation test in three, two, one. is not kicking in for the grind plates. There we go. 
Okay. So that was a minor glitch. Uh, just due to one of the timer blocks being off when it shouldn't have been. That was due to me resetting up the actions and probably clicking on trigger now by mistake on something. So I'm gonna let that, but I'm gonna let the site that cycle go because I want to make sure that everything that it stops properly. Now, if this is correct, that should stop about three kilometers away, and this one should, should stop pretty much two kilometers on the nose. <laughs> There we go. That seems to have worked quite well. Now, if this doesn't turn off the when it's supposed to, uh, I will have just lost my printer section and the grind plate. Nope, grind plate stopped. Perfect. Now we just gotta wait for the printer section to make sure that it stops. gets to five kilometers I'll just go into the antenna and take control of it and manually stop it. No, it's slowing, it's stopping. Excellent. And it just stops dead because got the extra thrust from the planet cracker so there we go all right so I'm gonna keep on recording here just cuz I'm gonna go redock with stuff and there's still a lot of potential for things to go horribly horribly wrong here but as you can see this is the Ina having shed all of her all of her bulk and uh, basically something, something goes down and I need to throw down do this to uh, essentially take 99% of my weapons. The other weapons on the on the uh, battle section, oh, sorry, on the printer section and the grind plate are basically just point defenses. They're there for they're not they're just Gatling guns. They're not intended to be serious. I, I whenever I increase the firepower of this, I always focus on putting it on the battle section here because this is where it's going to be useful. Uh, this is where I'm going to want it if I disconnect. Uh, now, as you can see, Ina, when you dis detach the grind plate, it makes available three missile tubes and a couple of sniper, uh, a couple of rail guns for sniping. <laughs> careful here with uh, a ship like this that's he hugely massive and has a lot of thrust it is quite easy to get up going faster than you expect to be and then end up plowing right through whatever it is you're trying to just get to <laughs> is they seem to have softened the blow a bit as far as merge block damage goes. I mean, it was, for a while, merge block damage, just, you know, even if you've got it out on a spar, like I have on the merge blocks in there, uh, it just causes a huge amount of damage when they actually do merge up. Um, just because... Unfortunately, to get close enough for a merge block to connect, you have to um, intersect with uh, the collision meshes of, of the other blocks, which makes it really difficult to, to do all this without huge amounts of damage. I 
it should be mostly lined up here since it's I don't want to accidentally plow those uh, rail guns into some soft armor blocks there <laughs> Okay, so we got some block deformation, as to be expected. Alright, well I'm going to stop recording now since the test was successful. And I will be back with a tour of the ship. And, uh, hopefully we can get back to having interesting things happen. Alright, I will see you all later.